Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the first card in my Thanksgiving 2017 card series and I wanted to show you this cute design that I came up with. The materials are very simple and some of them I got from the dollar store and this paper scrap is a leftover from another card design which I will show you in the video. So I, there's a couple of steps in this so I want to try and keep the video a little bit short so I'll be moving at a little bit faster pace in this video. So let me clear this away and show you the materials. So the papers. I have a card base cut eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. A black mat cut five and a quarter by four. A white panel cut five and a quarter by four also. A white panel which is cut five by three and three quarters. A craft panel which is six and a half by two. I also needed the same dimension of fun foam and this is adhesive back and I've already saved a step by putting it right on to the craft step, craft paper. I also have a stitch square. This is a two inch square from uh, left over from this card design that I made. This was a shaker card that I just did for my grandson Lucas and every time I cut these frames out, each one needed six, I, and I got uh, a little bit of leftover stitch square and I promised that I would make a card design using it and I did. So this is from that. If you didn't make that card of course, then you could just get a two inch square of black paper. The inks I'm using today is Memento, Potter's Clay, and Bamboo Leaves. I'm also going to be using VersaFine Onyx Black and VersaMark Watermark Stamp Pad. This is a, mine's a little dirty, it's usually, usually beige, but it's just a clear, sticky material that you use for embossing. And of course, I'm going to be using clear embossing powder. I'm also going to be using my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen, but just a very little bit. I'm going to be showing you two new products for me today. This is uh, from Creative Expressions. I believe it's a company in the UK. And they're now distributing uh, here. And this is called Gilding Polish. And it adds a really beautiful metallic uh, shimmer to plain white cardstock or black cardstock or any other cardstock. And it, I want to show you how to do this with this. This is Fern and this is Red Bronze. I'm going to be using an embossing folder. This is the Paper Studios. It is wood grain. I'm going to be using the Stampin' Up! Feathers Framelit and also the Four Feathers stamp set that coordinates with that. I have Stampability's Fall Holidays stamp set for this Give Thanks and this leaf. I'm going to be using a white button, so I have some buttons here. And I got these leaves from the dollar store. It's 50 in an envelope. So this is a lot of leaves and it only costs a dollar. I'm also going to be using some ribbon. Oh, what a mess. And some black and white baker's twine. Losing my ribbon. Okay, I think that's... Oof. I didn't roll that up. <laughs> That's all I'm going to need so let me clear this out of the way and start right into creating this card for you. The first step I'm going to prepare the the five by three and three quarter cardstock by adding the green glitter uh, gilding polish to it. So this container has a top which already has the blending tool that you can use for this product but you could also use your finger or a, a ranger blending tool or whatever you wanted and the material is you get a lot in the pot and you just need a little teeny bit so this will last this should last you a very long time and the, let me put this back together you just pop the top out didn't close it all the way. Just press it and it comes right out. And you just store it right back in when you finish. 
the, rec the manufacturer recommends that the first time you use this top, you wash it in warm soapy water, soapy water, <laughs> um, for best results. So I did that. So I've already used it once, as you saw. So I'm going to bring in a piece of paper to protect my work surface, and I only want the lower part of this paper gilded. So I'm just going to set that right there for a moment and open it. And you just drag it right through the material and just pull the extra right off. You don't need a lot. I don't, I don't know if you can see, but there's almost none on here. And then you just go over it and it just slides right on very smoothly. Now I'm going to give this three layers to make sure I get a, a good solid impression and it dries very very quickly so just give it a moment or two um, while we're waiting for that I saw a video and they recommended that when you are doing uh, things like this I would assume also blending uh, whatever you can do this on a piece of cardstock instead of copy paper that I'm using and then after you've finished you can take and use punches and punch out everything that you have, all the little mixed colors and everything, and you can end up with some really interesting uh, punch outs that way. So I'm just using one color here so it wouldn't really help. But I wanted to mention that because I thought it was brilliant. So let me go and give another. And I'm being careful to stay at the bottom of the, the paper. So I'll wait for this one to dry. And you can really see that it's just plain white cardstock, which has now been transformed to a green shimmer paper. And the final coat. And there we go. Little effort and adds great beauty. I love all products like that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to set that aside to dry for a second. And I'm going to bring in my Misty tool. I'll move this out the way so I don't make a mess. And I've already put my stamps on the door. And I'm going to bring in the craft with the fun foam on it. And I'm going to stamp these feathers on it. Something's not quite right. There we go. All right, let's make sure that they'll still fit. Yes. So I'm going to ink this up with the Versamark. And when you do Versamark over a colored cardstock, you end up with a tone on tone effect. So I'm going to end up with, uh, looks like a brown stitching where the leaves pattern is. And this is the look that I want. Okay, and it looks like it's been stamped in brown, but it isn't. It's just the Versamark. Okay, move this aside. And I'm going to drop this right into my clear embossing powder. Use my little spoon here. I probably should have run my embossing buddy over the top of this so that I didn't get embossing powder sticking where I don't want it, but since this is clear, it'll be all right because it's not going to show up anywhere. And on double on top of that, I'm going to be die cutting. But if you were going to do something that you needed it not to be embossing powder all over the place, please use your embossing buddy, which I have here, before you do your stamping. It'll make your life a lot easier. And you can probably see that it is sticking everywhere because I didn't do that but it'll be fine. So we'll just flick off the extra. There. So yeah, there is a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm just going to cut this off. All right, now I'm going to bring in my embossing tool and give it a second to heat up and I'm just going to go right over this.
All right, just give that a second to dry. Set that aside. Do a little clean up here because I have embossing powder going everywhere. This is just a little Swiffer that I got from the dollar store, coupled in a box. It's very good for picking up little powder like that and also glitter. It's very good for that. So now this is dried. It's perfectly dry. I'm going to take this panel and partially stick it into my embossing folder to meet where the end of the coloring is and I'm going to run this through my embossing folder. Be right back. My, my, my big shot. Be right back. Alright, now I have a piece of paper that is uh, partly green and partly embossed. So since it has a little bit of moisture here and a little bit of pressing, it's a little bit warped, but if you were really concerned about it, you could actually run this through your iron, no steam, hot setting, just turn the paper face down and just run over it with your iron. Or you could sit it up under something heavy and let it sit overnight and it will flatten out. But I'm not going to worry about that, I'm just going to keep going. So set that aside. And now I need to bring back my piece of paper and my gilding polish and I'm going to go over these um, leaves, uh, feathers. But I'm going to use my finger for this rather than where it went the uh, tool. So I'm just going to dip my finger in and just go all over it. And you see it immediately transforms and it looks like it is metallic and it is really, really beautiful. So I'm just randomly going over it with the red bronze and I use very little and now I'm going to do the same thing with the green and give it a little bit of patina different finger now of course though okay and just rub that in real good and a little bit more of the copper I think. There. And now it looks like metallic. Close this up. Be sure that you remember to close this these pots up so it doesn't dry out. You really don't want that to happen. Let me grab a paper towel real quick. I'm just going to take a paper towel and my stamp cleaner, wet it up, and show you that it just comes right off. This is not a messy product at all. See, took almost nothing. So don't be afraid to just get right in there. Okay, now I'm going to get the die cuts. I have temporarily stored them in the box, but I have usually keep them in their own envelope. So I'm going to just run this through my die cut machine, lining it up carefully, of course, and just up, run, them, run them through the machine. Now if you were concerned, every time this fun foam goes through the machine, it starts to get a little compressed. So when I do these two, this will be more, uh, less compressed than these two if I run it through uh, in one pass two passes. But if you were concerned about that, you could cut it right here and then you would only run the run it through the machine once. So that's totally a personal preference up to you. It is such a minimal amount, but it, it really won't show. But if you had a whole piece of paper with many leaves and you were going to cut out many at a time, that's something to keep in mind as you're doing it. So let me run this to the machine. I'll be right back. Okay. As you see, I cut it in half, so the leaf just pops right out, no problem. Don't need this. And it looks metallic. I hope you can see it. Alright, everything else is just going to be simple card assembly, so I'm going to let the music run and put everything together.
okay that's the finished card it came it I, I love it I hope you love this design also um, you could put any kind of embellishments here that you wanted and as I said if you didn't have a stitch square like I did a plain square would be fine also and as I mentioned these leaves came from the dollar store it was 50 in a bag so you can really get a lot of useful items at the dollar store for almost nothing so you just have to think outside the box when you look at it because it was in the silk flowers Halloween section and I thought you know this is be great for my Thanksgiving card so here we are and you can get some really really great finds in the dollar store and I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos as I mentioned this is the first in the Thanksgiving series there will be more videos please subscribe and and be the first one to know when I put new content up I'd like to thank my brother David for the music that he has provided for my channel and you will find information about his channel down below and also his website if you are looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I recommend my demonstrator, Frances Martin, and you'll find a link for her, her blog also. And she has some really, really useful information on her blog. I highly recommend you give her a check out. Even if you have your own demonstrator, you can learn a lot of really neat things from Frances. Thanks for watching, everyone, and Happy Thanksgiving. Take care.